Why, hello there everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Minasan, ohayo gozaimasu. And yes, I'm editing this video in the morning because I am super tired. But anyhow though, allow me to explain what's going on today. So I have two things to do, which you'll see in this video. Number one, I'm going to do some quick rehousings and separate these babies real quick. And these are my Neo Holothella Insei. And yes, there's actually only nine babies because this was a small mom, so her clutch was very small. But anyhow though, let's separate these nine little babies and then we'll feed the camel spiders, which is the second thing on this list. And my goodness guys, this is one thing that I actually do not like. Separating babies in the mother's enclosure. Typically we put eggs in an incubator and then we separate that way because it's much easier. But as you can see, I have to literally destroy the entire enclosure just to find the babies. Now there is a bit of bad news about this. Upon separating these babies, I have noticed that there were some small signs of cannibalism, meaning that some of the sisters and brothers ate each other, which honestly, which is why we separate the babies as soon as possible once they reach second instar. Now what I'm showing you here is the color forms, and this one here is the Neoholothelia Insei gold color form. And this gold color form is actually a recessive color form from the species, which it looks completely different from the olive color form, which is the one I'm showing you right now. That is a more darker color. This is the olive color form. So of the nine babies I separated, only one of them was the gold color form. <laughs> Talk about the odds. So both of the parents are olive color forms, but they both carried one gene of the recessive gold color form. So theoretically, one in four should be gold color form. And of the nine, only one of them was gold. But hey, at least I got one, right? So that's good enough for me. <laughs> now this female is actually still very plump and she might actually double clutch. This species is actually known for laying more than one egg sac. So I'm expecting another one, but let's wait and see. So there goes that, and now on to feeding the camel spiders. And just a disclaimer, these guys, they eat pretty gruesome. So uh, you're going to see a little bit of innards and roach guts going everywhere. So I guess beware. <laughs> but anyhow though guys, I finally am able to feed these guys. So the last time I talked about these camel spiders, the majority of them went to molting stasis. But now they have molted and their exoskeletons have hardened up, so now they're ready to feed. And I'm going to be feeding these pretty good, I'll tell you that. <laughs> now I actually got in a lot of these, but the funny thing is that I have zero males and every single one of these are female. <laughs> I'm stuck with so many ladies. Oh my goodness. Now I was going to actually try and breed these guys, but the thing is that finding a male for this species is so hard. So now I'm stuck with a bunch of ladies and no boyfriends or husbands. My goodness, these ladies are going to be single forever. <laughs> now I don't know the exact species for these camel spiders because these guys were exported out of Egypt and to be honest, nobody really has a solid clue on what exact species these are. Now I would like to try and reproduce a species in captivity, but the sad thing is that I cannot find a male. But don't worry though, in the future though, I would like to try again, but let's wait and see. Now, as we're feeding these guys, a lot of people find these uh, to be kind of creepy, I guess, or disgusting. But it's kind of confusing to me because everybody likes to see tarantula feedings. So why not see camel spider feedings? I mean, both tarantulas and camel spiders, they kind of have gnarly ways of eating. So honestly, I think it's cool either way. <laughs> Now a lot of people actually deter away from camel spiders because they think that camel spiders have short lifespans. But in actuality, camel spiders live a pretty decent lifespan. It's just that in captivity, we don't really know how long they can actually live. Or, in other words, we haven't really mastered how to care for them properly. It's funny because people overseas, and what I mean by overseas is people in Japan, and the Asian countries, they actually keep camel spiders pretty well. As a matter of fact, here in the United States and in the UK as well, they state that camel spiders only live a few months in captivity. But in Japan, people have been keeping them for a couple of years. <laughs> so there is this one person named Atsimborugi. I think that's how you pronounce it. 
This individual actually produces and breeds camel spiders in Japan. So I'll link this person's channel down in the description down below. So please check it out. And I'll leave a thread that they made on the arachno boards about their breeding progress and their works dedicated to camel spiders because this individual from Japan knows way more than the majority of people on the internet. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Because not only have Atsuburugi produced camel spiders, but this individual actually kept them for a couple, if not a few years, and they're still alive and thriving. So I would like to dedicate the credits of this video and the knowledge to this individual. So please check it out down in the description down below. If you want to learn more about camel spiders and how to breed them, please check out this individual. Because I have to say, Japan has figured it out. But anyhow guys, back onto the topic. So, as for tarantula breeding, I'm pretty certain this ends the season, so no more tarantula breedings. So from here on out, it's going to be updates, feedings, rehousings, and the typical stuff. Now, if an opportunity comes up, then I will breed again, but we kind of had to wait and see because I can't make promises unless I know I'm going to breed. So guys, let's cross our fingers and let's see what happens. <laughs> now, I do hope you guys do love these camel spiders, and if you do, please feel free to leave a like, and I'll actually like to hear down in the comments down below. Would you keep a camel spider as a pet if given the opportunity? Because I think that with the right care and in the right hands, I do think that these guys are pretty much interesting pets, more so than tarantulas in a certain way. They may look weird and they may be different, but without a doubt, they're very unique. Now I just need a male, and then I would like to try and breed these guys because I have like seven females and zero males. So it kind of hurts. <laughs> I really wish that people would give these guys a chance, but because of their weird looks and because of their freaky natures, I guess people just want to back away from these guys. But I really want to help these guys out in the hobby by reproducing them. So that way everybody can have a chance to own these little guys and maybe experience the fun themselves. Now I find that these guys are more predictable than tarantulas, which is actually a good thing because tarantulas are more unpredictable than these camel spiders in my experience keeping these guys, so yeah. But anyhow though guys, if you enjoy my content and if you enjoy these camel spiders and the things I do, please support this channel by leaving a like, comment what you think about these guys down below, and also feel free to subscribe so you never miss an upload. And also, feel free to follow me on my social media links, such as my Twitter and my Instagram, so that way you can see what I'm up to whenever I'm not posting a video and I upload on Fridays on this channel, or at least I try to. So stay tuned guys for next Friday, and I promise you I'm trying. <laughs> and with that, stay lax and laxo out from the Kumo Sensei.